Nigeria's former oil minister and former president of the OPEC conference, Dr. Ibe Kachiku, says there is need for more reforms of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation in support of better efficiency across its value chain opera operations. Kachiku was speaking earlier today in an exclusive interview with Arise Business correspondent Boson Omofaye at the Africa Energy Summit in South Africa. Give me the basic, the main takeaways from your panel why we need this Africa and OPEC more collaboration. I think one is, one, is, one is stabilization of the market. We can't do it on our own. Our volumes are very small. It's only when you amalgamate them into a collective that it begins to make meaning. And you see that in our relationship with the likes of the big, the big three, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Iran, uh, it is only a collective that gives us a good voice. So, so that, that's, that's the main reason. For Apple, however, we need to then pull out from that and say, how do we use Apple as a medium to get the advantages of OPEC and then take it internal and then begin to do things? Things on infrastructure, things on refining, things on being able to create um, secondary financing mechanisms for, for to be able to grow our volumes and reserves. That's one where we have failed so far. We've been members of the OPEC, we've helped the stabilization, but our people are not filling the indices of that membership. And it is Apple that needs to drive that, and member countries, NOCs that need to drive that. What about country specific such as Nigeria? A, a lot a lot still needs to happen. I, I think for me, I'm still disappointed that up to now we haven't been able, uh, we've, our volumes have tipped to flip flopped. Um, um, we, we ideally should be above 3 million barriers by now, but we're not getting the right financing. Maybe we've been at the, maybe we've been at the peak of driving the control mechanism. Sometimes, because you're the first on point, you begin to say, no, the temps are not good enough, I need to get better temps. And the IOS is run away. <laughs> so we've got to create a balance between the need for sovereignty control and the need to create environmentally friendly factors that enable investors to come in and stay and invest. Because otherwise, we're beginning to lose those investments to newer greener pastures in Africa. Interesting, Nigeria just removed full subsidy under the new administration. What's your take on the pathway forward on this very important development? Yeah, I, I think we didn't really have much of an option. The truth is that we couldn't finance, continue to finance that subsidy. Subsidy was taking a huge 30 to 40 percent of our general revenues. It just didn't make any sense. We failed to, to grow the refineries to be able to produce, and we need to do that. And I think whatever we take away from the subsidy removal must be invested back into refining. Dangote's refinery is, is upstream, hopefully, up in steam, hopefully, in the next couple of months. Uh, but the local refineries, the 450,000 barrels, uh, three refineries that are owned by the government, need to also come in to compete and then be able to slush down the prices. But in terms of taking away the, the a lot of a lot of issues had gone on subsidy, issues of uh, non-accountability, issues of non-application, issues of loss of income. So it was an inevitable move. It is painful. Uh, and everybody's going to feel it in terms of price at the pumps. But ultimately, we're beginning to see even the consumption in price at the pumps come down towards a reasonable margin. So what do you think Nigeria should look forward to do a whole lot more in the area of both downstream and upstream to gain those investments and to make sure that at least you've got products that are at least at a reasonable level for ordinary Nigerians? I, I think the key will be to strategically um, uh, do partnerships with big haul investors and in refineries. Um, I, I would like to see an NPC refineries, for example, um, do JVs with the likes of Saudi Arabia and the rest of them who are investing heavily globally. So they can help you run. Uh, there are no more emotions about this and it's about numbers. They can help you run the refineries, produce the volumes and be able to compete. Uh, I'd like to see us process a whole lot more of our crude internally as opposed to shipping them out. Um, I'd like to see us do uh, investments on pipelines and storage capacities. I'd like to see our midstream grow. Um, so we need to begin to look at development funds, even outside the um, African uh, development fund regime, because they're, they're very limited to what they can do. Uh, there are over 50 development funds all over the world. How do we reach them to see long-term benefits and invest in some of that infrastructure? That's what I'd like to see Nigeria do. What further reforms would you like to see within the NNPC itself? Is now NNPC limited? Would you like to see the NNPC become a public company listed on exchanges? What further breakdown into private sector would you like to see? I absolutely would like to see NNPC go public. Um, it's going to take a while, but their books have got to clean up. Their, their practices have got to be skin deep. 
Um, I don't think they are doing enough of that yet um, because it's still in formative stages. So I, need, I think they need to just sit down. I, I for example, I'm, I'm a very big pursuer of the fact that the napping segment of the business which controls the joint venture for the government should actually be taken out. Napus as an independent company. So NAPIS can run his business, run his downstream, run his midstream, run his refineries, run his own uh, MPDC uh, um, um, asset development, and then see therefore what the real bottom line is and let the government manage his own money. Uh, that's one of the things I'd like to see. I'd like to see them open up um, uh, hiring uh, to people in the private sector who have huge amounts of experiences to come and then sort of water, water down the whole effect of very 30, 40 years of uh, you know, public sector type dynamics that influence, influence hiring. So I'd like to see a whole lot of that.